Hi, my name is Mike Barr. I'm a science researcher at Worldbook, and I'm going to talk to you about Eoraptor. Um, if you were asked to name some dinosaurs, what examples would you give? You might imagine familiar ones such as Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops, but other people may picture mighty pterosaurs flying through the sky, or they may think of the giant plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs that lived and hunted in the oceans. Many people believe those well-known animals were dinosaurs, but in fact, they were not. The word dinosaur means terrible lizard, but dinosaurs were not actually lizards. They were a very specific group of reptiles. They lived on land, and many of them walked upright. There were no flying dinosaurs, at least not until birds and their close relatives appeared. Also, no dinosaur lived fully in the water. In other words, many of the most famous dinosaurs were not dinosaurs at all. What all these animals do have in common is that they were reptiles. So where did reptiles come from? The first reptiles appeared more than 300 million years ago, about 70 million years before there were any dinosaurs. Many different types of reptiles soon developed. Among the most important early reptiles were a group called the archosaurs. The word archosaur means ruling reptile. The first archosaurs probably appeared about 250 million years ago. Scientists believe that early archosaurs were small, quick predators. Archosaurs soon came to dominate most of the land. Scientists are not certain why archosaurs were such a successful group. However, archosaurs appeared at a time when the land was dry and the air was relatively low in oxygen. Archosaurs had various traits that helped them to conserve water, and their lungs were more efficient than those of most other animals. These advantages may have helped archosaurs to outcompete most other reptiles. The archosaurs gave rise to many important groups of animals, including the dinosaurs. Most scientists think that all dinosaurs evolved from a single common ancestor, an archosaur that gave rise to no other groups. But archosaurs gave rise to other groups. These included crocodilians, a group that was once quite diverse, but today survives only as crocodiles and alligators. Archosaurs also included pterosaurs, which were a group of flying archosaurs. The most famous pterosaurs are the pterodactyls. Remember though, crocodilians and pterosaurs were archosaurs, but they were not dinosaurs. Of course, the most successful group of archosaurs were the dinosaurs. Scientists who study dinosaurs are still trying to figure out exactly when and where the first dinosaur appeared. Eoraptor is one of the oldest known dinosaurs. It lived about 230 million years ago in what is now Argentina. Eoraptor wasn't very big. It was only about as large as a medium-sized dog. It had a slender body that reached about three feet or one meter in length and probably weighed only about 20 pounds or nine kilograms. The very first dinosaur appeared soon before Eoraptor and it was probably built very similarly. In fact, the very first archosaur may have closely resembled, resembled Eoraptor as well. Moreover, all the later meat-eating dinosaurs even including giants such as Tyrannosaurus, arose from creatures much like Eoraptor. These meat-eating dinosaurs are called the theropods. Most scientists believe that the theropods later gave rise to birds. So birds are classified as archosaurs too. In fact, crocodilians and birds are the only living archosaurs. Eoraptor was a swift, relatively small animal that probably fed on a variety of foods and faced much competition from non-dinosaurs. It showed little sign of the great triumphs that were to come for dinosaurs over the next 165 million years. By studying Eoraptor, scientists are learning more about the origins of the incredible beasts we call dinosaurs.